Welcome to more cases of the second order linear differential equations with constant coefficient. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the repeated root case. So, so far in previous videos on our playlist, um, I've gone through what you do when you have two distinct roots to the characteristic equation. So remember we had a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero. And when we made the ansatz e to the rt, we found a quadratic equation. Oops, a r squared. Oh, I think. Anyway, uh, a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero. And so we've already dealt with the cases of r one and r two being real and distinct, different values. And we've also dealt with the case where the roots are complex, so alpha plus or minus beta i. And here we're going to deal with a case where there's a repeated root. In other words, this quadratic factors, and we have an r minus r naught squared. And if it's going to be the same equation, well, it'll be like this, equals 0. So what we end up with in that case is that r is equal to r naught, and if you want to say r naught and r naught are the two roots, you, you could, but it's kind of silly to do that. And what you quickly realize is that our ansatz only ends up with one case. So there's no general solution that we can write down when we just have a single root to the characteristic equation. We only get one of them. So now we're going to appeal to a method that works not only here, but in other circumstances. And that is when you have a single solution to a second order equation, reduction of order is a method that allows you to figure out uh, another solution. So let's go through how reduction of order works. So we have this one y1 and we're looking for a y2. So now the motivation for why this works uh, requires a little bit more maybe experience or more fiddling uh, with the equations, but let's just accept, because it works, that y2, if we assume it's some v of t multiplied by the original one, y1 of t, then we can plug this into our differential equation and hopefully we'll get an equation that we can solve directly. Now there's a second question is, how do we know that this y2 that we get is going to be independent? So we will have to check the Ronskian on y1 and y2 once we solve any of these cases to make sure. But we'll see for this case it works out pretty well. Okay, so, um, so let's do this with an example. y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y equals 0. And the characteristic equation here is going to be r squared plus 4r plus 4 equals 0. And that's that factors into r plus 2 squared. And so we now know that r is equal to minus 2. And that's just a single r value. So we're in this case of a repeated root. So y1 is going to be e to the r, oh, okay, I can write it in there, e to the minus 2t. And y2 is going to be, let's put an of t, just so we can make it explicit where the functions are. So it's very important this v has to be a function of t. If v is a constant, then it's not going to give us anything new because we're multiplying it by e to the minus 2t, which is already, we already know that's a solution. So now for the method of reduction of order, we're going to take this and we're going to plug it back into our equation. And that'll give us an equation for v, hopefully easier to solve. Okay, so uh, taking one derivative of this function, we get v prime of t times e to the minus 2t plus, well, actually there's a minus 2 that's going to come down in a, in a chain rule, so I'll put that in front. And then v of t, we're not touching that on the second part of the product rule. And then we multiply by e to the minus 2t. So that's y2. Oh, sorry, that's y2 prime. And then y2 double prime. Now we're going to have to 
have a lot. And we're going to have to write this tight so that we can fit it because uh, it's going to be four terms, right? I'm going to take a V double prime, and I'm going to drop the of t's now because it saves me a little bit of space. So V double prime e to the minus 2t minus 2 times V prime e to the minus 2t. That's the two derivative pieces of this product. And then on this one, I'm going to get a minus 2V prime e to the minus 2t. So that's from that one. And then that's by taking the derivative of the V in there. And then I take the derivative of the exponential and I get plus 4V e to the minus 2t. And you'll notice these two here are identical, so they add up. And I have v double prime e to the minus 2t minus 4v prime e to the minus 2t again plus 4v e to the minus 2t. And so when I plug all of that back into the original equation, and you'll notice there's a lot of echoes in this expression when you look at this y double prime and you look at the original differential equation. Not a complete echo, but it's, it's got similar coefficients. And that's going to help us because when we write down y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y, a lot of things are going to cancel. So let's write that down. v double prime. Eh, I'm going to factor out an e to the 2t from this whole expression because you'll notice everything everywhere along here has an e to the 2t in the y2 double prime, y2 prime, and the y2 expression. So I'll have an e to the minus 2t out in front, and then we get v double prime minus 4v prime plus 4v. That's the y double prime term. And then plus 4 times y prime, which is this expression here. So I get 4v prime minus 8v, and the e to the minus 2t is already factored out. And then finally, I, that's the y prime term, and then the y term is going to be v e to the minus 2t with a 4 in front, so 4v. And that is equal to 0. So there I've got my, this is right here, this is y2 double prime, this one is y2 prime, and this is y2. Okay, so what happens in here? So you'll notice v primes cancel. There's a plus 4 and a minus 4. And then there's a 4v plus 4v plus 4v and minus 8v. So these two 4v's cancel with this minus 8v. And I'm left with e to the minus 2t, v double prime equals 0. But an exponential e to the minus 2t is never 0 for any t value, so I get that v double prime is equal to zero. And now I can integrate that twice. I get v prime is equal to c1, and v is now equal to c1 times t plus c2. And I can take this v expression and plug it into y2 of t from above, which is this one here, and I get C one e whoops sorry C one t e to the minus two t plus C two e to the minus two t. I've just multiplied it out there. So you can see, even though we were looking for a second solution, we actually found a full general solution here because it's got both of the c values already right there. And you'll notice this is the y one that we started with. So this function here is this new solution that we are hoping will be an independent solution. So we have to check the Ronskian. We have to check the Ronskian of t e to the minus 2t e to the minus 2t and figure out what that equals and whether it's equal to zero. And you should, if you go through that calculation, and I won't do that here because that's really a good Ronskian exercise, calculating from derivatives of functions, uh, you ought to find that these uh, two solutions, t e to the minus 2t and e to the minus 2t, are in fact independent solutions. So this does form a general solution. Now, this generalizes. This is 
going to be what we see in general when we pull off this, this uh, reduction of order method. That is, we see an e to the minus 2t as we expected based on our original characteristic root. And then we multiply that by t to get the second independent solution.